Bill Maher called out CNN for how they covered Kamala Harris's convention speech. Watch this. CNN is the place where both sides can watch. And I'm talking about the people on CNN. And what I, I know what the conservative side of America thinks, and I don't blame them. They were just gushing about how great a speech it was. And I think she did fine. I didn't think it was as good as they were making it out to be. It does look like tokenism. It's kind of like the same as The View. I don't think that you can say that, that CNN is anything but fair. Everyone who, who was speaking last night, it's not like they were all Democrats. I mean, Dana Bash, Jake Tapper, Abby Phillips. They come across Giving that way. analysis. They come across that way. In a moment like that, it was like five to one. It always looks like five to one. Okay, we need Joe Concha. Unfortunately, we have Joe Concha. Uh, anything but fair. What do you say to that there, Joe? Well, in my new book, Progressively Worse, Stu, I, I dedicate an entire chapter to Bill Maher, and I refer to him as the lone or one of the few voices of reason left in the Democratic Party, at least one of the few voices of reason left on television uh, who happens to be a Democrat. Uh, the man is consistent in his arguments and with his principles. I mean, you could agree or disagree with him, but at least you know you're getting an honest perspective from Maher. And when he says conservatives do not trust CNN because it is so staunchly anti-Trump, he's not wrong because they'll put on people like Adam, Ken Adam Kensinger or Anna Navarro, George Conway, and call them Republicans or pretend that's being balanced by putting them on by saying, oh, see, these conservatives don't even like Trump. Only Scott Jennings over there can be called a conservative. And Maher is right. It's almost always five to one on shows they portray as news programs. And quite frankly, Stu, it's been that way for some time. OK, hold on a second, Joe. I'll get back to you in a moment. Kevin O'Leary is with me. Do you think CNN's fair? I think they're trying to get fairer. And what I like about the market determined by advertising revenue, because I'm, I'm an income statement guy, um, if you don't find your way to the center, I don't care what network you are, you're going to lose advertisers because they don't want a bifurcated market. If they want to sell shoes, they want to sell them to both sides of the equation. I think everybody is moving to the center, hmm. and they're doing it for money, and that makes me a big believer in how it's going to work because I don't think you can stay to the left, stay to the right, and make money. That's the problem. It's hard to do it now. Yeah, follow the money. All right. Stay there, Kevin. Back to you, Joe. J.D. Vance says Trump would veto a national abortion ban. Senator Elizabeth Warren is already pushing back on that. She says women are not stupid and they won't trust Trump and Vance with abortion access. Joe, no matter what Trump says about abortion, the Democrats will just tear it up. Uh, yeah, let's be clear, Stu. I mean, J.D. Vance, who actually did sit down and do an interview with Meet the Press, he's been on every Sunday talk show, it seems, over the last three weeks, while Kamala Harris and uh, her running mate are nowhere to be found. Uh, they they obviously are not available, making themselves available because their handlers are petrified of what they're going to say. Now, let's be clear to answer your question. Donald Trump has never called for a national ban on abortion, period. Throughout his campaign, his position has been relatively moderate. He believes abortion should be legal in cases of rape or in cases that the mother's life is in danger. He believes the decision is, should be left up to the people, should be left up to the states as the Supreme Court had ruled. And he has said that a ban would only take place, or it should anyway, after 15 weeks, which is essentially at the end of the first trimester. If Kamala Harris actually did interviews, or her running mate for that matter, she should be asked why she and her running mate support late-term abortion. Then if you look at the polling around that, an overwhelming majority of Americans do not support late-term abortion, whether it be second trimester or third trimester. But again, we'll never know what Kamala Harris's official position is on this, it seems, because she will not do an interview. And quite frankly, she has not done any answered one question of substance in the past 36 days since she became the Democratic nominee, in essence. And that's can't just a whole ball of wrong, Stu. Just a whole ball of wrong. Well, it can't go on forever, though, can it? It just can't. Joe Concha, thanks so nope. much indeed. See you again soon.